made our entrance so I could do some editing down in Williams because they have good cell service, but it's kind of a mistake to delay. You want to get here super early and it's Monday. Would you say there were 23 cars in front of us? No, 14 cars. 14 cars and it took 23 minutes. But the guy said that the visitor center opened today. I didn't even know it was closed. He said it's been closed for three years. And also the water restrictions that had been in place are no longer. So, uh, so we should be good. But what about the 60 cars behind us? Oh, yeah, 60 oh, cars did. behind us. Oh. Visitor center is open. Wow, three years. The Canyon World is a wonderful eight-minute immersive show projected onto a large sphere. I've never seen anything like it. We see North America as part of the supercontinent Pangaea. 500 million years ago, North America was isolated, straddled the equator, and partially underwater. My description of the Grand Canyon is 277 miles of eye candy. Six thousand feet deep at its deepest, and 18 miles wide at its widest. There is no single view that is sweeter than the next. If you are lucky enough to visit during a storm, then you are lucky enough. The canyon beckons you at every turn to come closer, but not too close, because the edges that record billions of years of history have also taken many a life over its edges or swept an innocent victim down its copper-colored river. Be prepared to get up early and get to an overlook for sunrise. You can spend the rest of your life catching up on sleep, but you'll never see a sunrise like those of the canyon. And then plan your evenings to take in the sunset. Don't miss a single one. morning we woke up to dead coach batteries and you know if this happens you can't use your generator because you can't start it without the batteries we've been trying to sleuth the problem all day and I think we've solved it uh, well I think we've gotten close we think it's either the solenoid or a fuse and uh, so we'll wait till we get home to fix it but to solve the immediate problem we drove down to 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 say and I think you pronounce it and the campground down there was nice enough to let us park for a reduced fee for like five or six hours so we could charge our batteries. They charged us $20. So while we were there, we also did our laundry and charged all our devices and got fully charged so we could come back to Desert View and camp again because it's nice and quiet there. We can open the back doors, it's beautiful. And we are now down here. And also it's walking distance to the edge of the canyon so you can get nice photographs and sunsets and sunrises and all that. Here's a tip if you're trying to get a campsite at some place like Desert View. I called and was able to get, I didn't call. 
I went online. I found one spot open for one of the nights we wanted, and I booked it. And then the next day, I went online again. Somebody had canceled, so I booked two days after that one, thinking, well, maybe I'll, you know, we could find some other space spot to camp. And then I went on the next day and found the middle day. And so if you're trying to get campsites, go ahead and book those single days and maybe you'll find additional spots. Um, that's the best way to do it. And the same is true for Fort Wilderness at Disney World. And the other excitement today was when we were parked at the general store and some, some guy hit the side mirror on our van and uh, it's broken, we'll have to get it fixed. Um, it's one of those rental things, you know, where they rent these big, huge Class Cs and they're, they've never driven one before and they cut the corners too tight. Anyway, um, he's from Belgium and he's an orthopedic surgeon, but uh, he's here until November. So we'll send him the bill and I'm sure we'll get paid. The National Park receives 6 million visitors each year, so don't expect solitude. But that doesn't mean you can't find some peace and quiet. Just get yourself away from the hotels, shops, and amenities. The best way to do that is to walk the rim trail. We broke it up into two sections by utilizing the free shuttle that takes tourists between stops along Hermit Road. It runs for seven miles between Bright Angel Trailhead and Hermit's Rest. Again, a bus will arrive at each stop, both east and westbound, every 10 to 15 minutes. Walking this section of the rim trail from Mojave Point to the Abyss offers exceptional views. Don't get too close to the edge or you might have a big letdown. This is the Abyss. It's 3.8 miles from the Abyss to Hermit's Rest and we're gonna walk it. We just never get tired of seeing this view. You can't help but wanna stop and take pictures. But I'm sure it gets, I get old in the edit. a section of the original Hermit Road constructed in 1911 to 13. We got lost getting back to the car, so we ended up going how many? Seven miles? Seven, Seven and a half miles round trip. But that's okay, we needed the steps. And we got them. Yeah, they got two buckets of mint chocolate chip. down here getting a time lapse and John just spotted a weather balloon. I don't know if I can zoom in on it. There it is. I don't know if you can see it on there, but there it is. That's weird.
One of the unique characteristics of the Grand Canyon is that it makes its own weather. So depending on where you are, it may be foggy one moment and sunny the next. The scenes change at every turn. It's about the smallest campsite we've ever had to park the rig. Looks like a picture. Back on the rim trail today. This time we're gonna be dropped off at the abyss and walk toward the village. I'll pass on the helicopter ride. There's a book they sell at the Kolb Studio all about the deaths in Grand Canyon. I think I might pick it up this time. First glimpse of Bright Angel Trail. So every day the Cold Brothers would dash down that trail all the way down to Indian Gardens and then dash back up after they developed their film so they could sell it to the tourists. That's amazing. They had to go down there to get the water to develop the film. Meet Ed and Ann. They're work campers we met last year at Kolb Studio, and they invited us to come back this year and join them for a Condor release at Vermilion Cliffs. That video will be next week's installment. Today, Ed and Ann arranged for a bit of a backstage tour of one of the park landmarks, the Desert View Watchtower, which has been closed since 2020. The tower was built in 1932, it is 70 feet high and patterned after towers similar to ones that we've seen at Hoven Weep National Monument and Mesa Verde National Park. The architect, Mary Coulter, was employed by the Fred Harvey Corporation, where she also designed Hermit's Rest and the Lookout Studio. The bottom floor of the tower is the Kiva Room, and it is open to the public. In 2015, the park began restoration of the murals inside the tower. One floor of the five-story tower was completed each year in six to eight week segments. Ed and Ann work for the Grand Canyon Conservancy, which is the official nonprofit partner of the park. The Conservancy's good work raises private funds, operates retail shops in the park, and provides educational programs. For only $35,
you can become a member for which you will receive discounts in the park and online stores and reciprocal discounts at over 400 participating Public Land Alliance stores around the country. Round two on the ice cream. I got the same thing. Uh, John got some. What'd you get? Chocolate brownie and espresso chip. Backwards to see the elk. Okay, ladies. Yeah. Right on the trail. Yeah. There's a little one there. Probably. I hope so. 